In the words of Stevie Nicks, welcome. <laughs> I actually went to the UPS store by my house, and the lady opened the door for two ladies in front of me and went, welcome. And she said, oh, that's for my favorite podcast. <laughs> and I was standing two behind that lady, and I thought about saying something, but then the lady was gone. I mean, she worked there, but she was in the back or something, so I didn't say nothing. But it was a very <laughs> flattering shout-out from a termite. Um, this is it for 2023, termites. This is it. This is the last time you'll see me in the Bucky's outfit until, you know, next season. It's the season. We'll bring it out in July. This leg, by the way, if you're not if you're listening and not watching, is a giant um, leg on a stool that had alcohol in it. That's from Tinsel Town in Kansas City. Um, the Tinsel Town Tavern. That's the, so far the greatest pop up bar. Really? And I've been to a bunch in Nashville. Nothing competes with Tinsel Town. And really? nope, Kansas City nailed it there. Cool. I must say. Speaking of, well, what are we? What are we drinking? I'm drinking a little Thunder and beer mm -hmm. because I've been in Nashville all week, delicious. and they have delicious. Well, I'm a sucker for the can. The can's just interesting. It's a good beer. The more shit. Well, I love the beer. It's Jackalope Brewing. They make all good beers. But the more shit you put on a can, the more liable I am to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is it. Twenty twenty three is crazy. We, we, can, a, we can put the, the glass down if you want. Well, the the leg. Here's what's crazy. So if you go to Vegas, I don't know if they still do this. But I think they do. At the Paris Hotel, they have an Eiffel Tower that's like this big, a plastic <laughs> Eiffel Tower, yeah. and they fill it. You buy. It's like I don't know, a hundred bucks, but mm -hmm. you get like four shots in there, and then all the everything that's just gonna make you vomit. But the, yeah, they wear them on a string around their neck like they're cattle. I mean, I don't, I just, I all, I don't like the colors of all these things. All I think of is vomiting all of it back up. But at some point in the night, and I was sitting, and there were these young guys. They were like in their twenties, and the guy, the bartender, made them each their own Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. whatever. And the kid, so the bottom of the tower was filled with alcohol. But once you got past where the viewing area would be on the Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. there was no more alcohol. And the kid got upset, and he was like, dude, you didn't fill up my top, my Eiffel Tower. And the guy goes, first of all, it would be illegal for me to do that. It would take, like, 20 <laughs> shots of alcohol. He right. goes, and second of all, if I did that and you drank it, you would die. <laughs> <laughs> the kid was just, like, all perplexed. I mean, dude, do you know how much liquor's in the bottom of your Eiffel Tower? Like, a shit ton. And then he wanted it all the way to the top. I'm surprised. I don't know. I bartended. We had rules about all that. Like just I, <laughs> Vegas, there's no rules, whatever you can do, whatever. I don't even know if they still do it, but they did. They I've seen the Eiffel Towers not that long ago. Yep. So if you're looking for a giant drink that you can wear around your neck like you're a cow. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And a little Evan Williams eggnog because it's a holiday. Yeah. So good. I know the um the kid who puts all the chemicals. Uh, in the pool just came over mm -hmm. and I went out to say hello in this outfit Stop it. and I had a beer in my Bucky's glass uh. the look on his face I don't know I don't know how he received all that <laughs> but I gave him a really great <laughs> tip so he was very nice. happy I'm very like Christmas. Bucky Santa has come to deliver your Christmas <laughs> present thank God you're here at the same time it's all working out and before we go on to Queen News I did attend the Titans game for a little sports talk. Well, I'll save that for when I get into it because we have a little sports talk this week. Apparently, some people like it. I'll never make it too long because oh. I know some people, if I say sports segment and you don't like it, you can just fast forward. Right. How about that? Mm -hmm. We're going to try just for the sake of trying these mini Cheetos. I do love a Cheeto. Oh. I've never seen a mini. Yeah. No. No. I went in a Piggly Wiggly, by the way. I don't, know. I don't know how many Why? of you have a Piggly Wiggly by your house. I needed bread. Uh -huh. It's not where I would normally choose to shop. It doesn't. It looks pretty. There's a lot of report of meth homeless people in that particular parking lot, oh. so I don't like to park there. And then there's always these <laughs> creepy people. Right. And the store, it's a little sad. Uh -huh. But everything in there I remember from being a kid because it's the shit we ate. I think the whole store should be called We Don't Give a Fuck About Preservatives. <laughs> everything. Totally. Everything where I'm like, oh, that was good. Don't tell me Hamburger Helper's not good. It's right. delicious. I haven't seen it in 20 years, but here it is. Mini Cheetos. Oh, they are. They're tiny little Cheetos. Oh. In a, a Pringles can. They must be the same company. Huh. You can't just rip that off. No. Can you? Maybe. It's Frito-Lay. Yep. Plano, Texas. Well done, Plano. Nice. People sometimes talk shit about Plano, Texas, that there's just a bunch of kids out there doing drugs. Well, somebody's making Cheetos. Exactly. Yeah. I've been there. I thought it was fine. I didn't know it was anything weird. These are really good. I thought it was fine. 
This, if you're a Cheeto person, could be gone in one sitting. Really? Dangerous. Yeah, let's see how many count. Oh, my God, sodium, 330. That's why I like it. Yeah. It's all salt. 15 carbs. I wonder what they call a serving. <laughs> serving size, one ounce, 63 of them. Perfect. <laughs> can it get yeah. 63 of them? Yeah. There's three point three and a half servings in this can. So if you ate the whole can, well, I can't do that math. Who's getting who? Right. Um, and then these, look, turkey stuffing potato chips. The term I brought these backstage in Florida, and I forgot. I saved them cool. for, well, Thanksgiving. No, it was after Thanksgiving. Sorry. I know that's loud. I usually do it beforehand. I forgot. I was talking with my friend outside. Mm. Does it taste like turkey stuffing? These are made from Clancy. Gobble, gobble, wavy potato chips. Turkey stuffing. Huh. Mm. They're okay. Huh. If you handed me one and said, what does this taste like? I would not know. Gotcha. People like those chips. The chips are good. Really and they're them. fine. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand where the turkey stuffing part's coming in. It tastes like potatoes. Yeah. No, which is fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll just put that aside with the mini Cheetos that I'll be eating later. <laughs> and, um, okay, so, well, first we'll do a little shout out a Twitter uh, termite. Is, so you'd be, well, you'd be a termite. Mm -hmm. was just having a bad day, so I would give said I'd give a shout out to Bambi. Nice. I hope uh, whatever's wrong is better. Mm -hmm. Here's to 2024. That's a reason to drink. Why not? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nutmeg is on top of here, which I did. Lewis has a whole video online. He was recently in Connecticut mm -hmm. somewhere, and it's the home of Nutmeg. It's and he, Nutmeg State, yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's the Nutmeg State? Yeah, I don't really know why. <laughs> <laughs> he did this whole thing. He, it was just off the cuff. I don't know. He posted it online, but he was just there. And we'll research it. Well, nobody ever says, would you like a Connecticut nutmeg or perhaps <laughs> another state? <laughs> I mean, who they even, how, what is it? Is it on a tree? I have no idea. Go, Google, what is nutmeg? Is it, a, is it a, like a nut? I don't know. I just thought it was. How does nutmeg grow? Nutmeg. Nutmeg. And why does Connecticut have all of it? It's their trees. Were propagated sexually from seeds and asexually from cuttings or graftings. Wow. Yeah. How can they make money? People only eat this once a year. Is it a seed or a fruit? It's a spice seed. It's a spice seed? Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I don't know how they're staying in business. It's like watching a Hallmark movie and they have even a maple syrup farm. I watched one about a maple syrup farm. It's early in Would, wow. What? Wow. Who knew all this is? I've been to Connecticut a lot. I didn't know all this was going on out there secretly. You people are, how are you making money? People, how much, like I bought a thing of nutmeg. It's this big. Yep. That will last six years. Yeah, it's like my old friend Tom Ryan's joke about baking soda. You just move it from house to house. How do they, then they tricked us in baking soda. They told us this is part of his joke where he's like, they weren't selling enough because think about it. Every apartment I ever had, I just moved the baking soda to the next refrigerator. Right. And you're supposed to have it open mm -hmm. per my mom. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if any of that's true. But then they were like, shit, we're not selling enough baking soda. So they told ever to remember when they told us to all pour it down the drain? Yeah. It'll make your drain feel better. So they actually just had us dumping out baking soda to sell more baking soda. <laughs> it's pretty brilliant, though. And we all did it. I did it. I was like, oh, I didn't know I had to do that. So your fridge doesn't stink. So... Right, your fridge and your drain. Yeah. All right. So there you have it. Um, queen news. Mm -hmm. Dolly, it never stops. No. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like Rosie on Tic Tac. Tic Tac, you don't stop. Dolly, you don't stop. Yeah, she's crazy. She's, she's crazy. bringing a 60,000 square foot restaurant and show to Florida that will create 300 jobs. When, when does this lady sleep? I mean, I know she's not doing it, but her whatever, she's it's still her money. Somebody's got to tell her, hey, hey, crazy legs, what are your thoughts on a pirate show in Florida? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Um, she owns the Dollywood theme port. She owns uh, Dream More and Resort Spa, Dollywood Parton Stampede, which I have attended. Pretty fun. Went with my friend Loreen. The stampede was fun, I yeah. guess, but it was like north and south. They were still doing Civil War stuff. She, that stopped, yeah. I think. That was like five years ago. Uh -huh. They moved on to... The holiday one's cool. 
holiday one is very cool. There's flying angels. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the no alcohol policy, I got to say. You got to use your hand. Well, and I didn't like that there was a thing that looked like a bar. And then I went up and ordered a drink and was told they don't have any alcohol. And then, then, then don't put, stand behind a bar. Yeah, right. da, 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 da. Get behind a lemonade stand or whatever fattening shit we're selling here. Yeah. Full Pepsi, no yeah. diet Pepsi. I'm like, oh, come on. Especially when there's a banjo playing. There was a banjo. I was totally getting in my hillbilly vibe. And I thought, you know what? A nice glass of red breast would really turn yeah. my hillbilly on. And then I was told there was iced tea or some shit. <laughs> um, anyway, she owns all that. Yeah. And she owns um, the Pirates Voyage Dinner and Show. So we're moving on to Pirates. So we're actually moving backwards in time from the Civil War. We're going backwards to okay. Pirates. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, she's going to bring one to Florida. Oh, right now it's in Myrtle Beach. It's South okay. Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the Dolly Parton Company. Cool. Um, you are entertained as pirates such as uh, Blackbeard and Calico Jack. They battle in a variety of scenarios. You will also see birds and mermaids as they enjoy a four-course feast that includes chicken, ham, corn on the cob, potatoes, and apple pie. I did not think the food was that good at the Dollywood Stampede. Not that I was expecting it to be good. No. And you eat with your hands. And it kind of smelled like horseshit. The whole place smelled like horseshit, quite frankly, <laughs> because there were live horses there, so it's going to smell like horseshit. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd rather, can we just drink through this? No. I don't want... <sighs> I think that's the Christian touch. We need. She needs to do one for Catholics and Jews, <laughs> <laughs> and Methodists and Luther people. That, they, they, they're Catholic light. The yeah. people that drink, yeah, and don't, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's an experience and a meal. It, it's fun to take the kids, and yeah. it's sixty nine bucks for an adult, thirty four. Uh, oh, so, oh, well, you can get an adult ticket for sixty nine ninety nine and thirty four ninety nine. Um, but I mean, three hundred jobs. Good for her. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, in Panama City Beach. Construction will start in 2024, yeah. completed by 2025. Boom. Many pirates, many wow. pirates. It's going to be in a 60,000-foot square indoor theater with 1,000 seats. Whoa. Oh, it's going to cost $60 million and will bring 300 jobs. Cool. Yeah, it's just amazing. I love the panhandle. The panhandle does have its highlights for sure. Um <laughs> But, and it's not as, it, people go, well, yeah, but you won't move to Florida and go to the Panhandle because it's not really warm in the winter. It's warm and more than anywhere. I mean, it's hoodie weather. Right. Would they want hot? Right. Like people my parents' age want, a like tan. shorts and a tank top, and they want to come back tan and show everybody and brag, oh, I was in Florida. Um, okay. Yeah, um, so, Dolly, there's, there was something else, I think. Oh, no, we're moving on to Cher. This is so great. <laughs> Shared a, oh, and I forgot my Jelly Roll thing. Dang it. Well, I'll just tell you about Jelly Roll. Okay. He filled up um, two giant tractor trailers with toys and brought them to this place in Nashville and just gave them away. Oh, so awesome. Good for, where's Jelly at? He's right here. Jelly's over there. Good yeah. for him. A giant toy drive. Yeah. Cool. Um, all free. <laughs> um, and Cher, Queen Cher, Queen Tay Tay, by the way, was at the, um, he, she, yeah, the, the Chiefs against the Patriots, Should and uh, yeah, they did boo her. But I think it's because she was rooting for Kansas City. Well, I that's think not very nice. we well, shouldn't boo her, right? I mean, what do you care? But but that's you know football, whatever. Um, they showed her because one of the Patriots did knock boyfriend Travis to his ass, and uh, now that she understands football, right. um, it's fun. she was very upset about her boyfriend. Uh, they still won, so whatever. It's all fine. It's a slippery slope. Uh-huh. Cher went on the Kelly Clarkson show, and she told, I'm going to cuss here if that bothers anybody, So, because Cher said it, because she's never been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Stupid. She said they can go fuck themselves. Yeah. And she wouldn't do it now anyway. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Cher mints no words while discussing the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for failing to induct her for yet another year on today's episode of the Kelly Clarkson show. She said she wouldn't accept the honor at this point, even if it was offered a million dollars. Wow. Which she's, she has a lot of. Because um, she's out there promoting her Christmas song, which I love. You love DJ, it. play a Christmas song. It's just, a, yeah. it's the best new Christmas song. I'd like the, my entire house to blink to that, like the gay guys <laughs> did when I lived in West Hollywood. They had the uh, Mariah Carey one, but I'm over that song. It's just played too much. Right. The Mariah, oh, man. Um, 
She's had a number one hit in seven seven different decades. Cher has. Oh, wow. Right. And you can't, I know she's not rock and roll, but neither is Dolly. They induct all kinds of people that aren't tech, you know, clinically, technically rock and roll people. Right. Um, she pointed out that she's only one of two artists who have done this. The others would be the Rolling Stones. Good company. Yep. It took four of them to be one of me. And I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Clarkson, along with the rest of the audience, was shocked to hear Sheridan hadn't been included in the yearly ceremony, despite her many contributions to the music industry. Um, Kelly Clarkson said, wait, are you serious? Um, and Cher said, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding you. I was about to say shitting you, but she said that anyway. So you did. <laughs> Um, she said, you know what? I wouldn't be in it now if they gave me a million dollars. I'm never going to change my mind. They can just go fuck themselves. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you imagine it's 70. She's, she's like 77 or 78 years old. I mean, I'm sure she doesn't give a shit. No. Like, there's some age where you're just over trophies. Right. It's just a trophy. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, oh, it's an honor. Mm -hmm. Right. But, like, are you ever going to go to Cleveland share to look at your display? No. 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 So who cares? Mm -hmm. I go in there every time I'm in Cleveland because there's so much to see. Yeah, cool. If you love music, I mean, you should go once. It's mm -hmm. an awesome place. Um, and then you should go to my bar, the Harbor Inn. Get in an Uber. It will take you five minutes. Um, maybe I'll write a travel book with my favorite bar. Some you termites should. have said that. Yeah. I know. Um, Cher had one last, one last mic drop, uh, drop moment as she reminded Clarkson that she changed music forever with her 1998 album, Believe, which won Best Dance Recording. It was nominated for Record of the Year uh, at the 42nd uh, Annual Grammy Awards. That's amazing. Good for Cher. She's so cool. You get out there. There's a picture of her meeting uh, Prince William, which was very cute. Mm -hmm. She did some royal shindig thing. I don't know what that was all about. Speaking of royalty, we have our royal update. Oh, Prince Harry and Meghan. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know why he can't go on YouTube and watch the movie about his great uncle. No. The exact same thing is going to happen to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Like, if I could just sit him in a room and go, dude, right. yeah, I just, yeah, well, they're, um, well, they were voted, mo like, second most hated by the ho the Hollywood reporter uh, celebrities. They should be oh, first. the lady that was first was that one that fought with uh, Johnny Depp. The, the divorce, I didn't Amber follow any of that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, okay. I have to, yeah, I mean, the money's going to run out. Yes. Like, and I asked my parents, I go, what did this George guy and Wallace Simpson? Yeah. Like, I don't remember any of that. And you know they're old because most of the movies are in black and white. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's just them both chain smoking. They're wherever <laughs> they go, they're just chain smoking. And I'm like, well, you can't say they weren't fun. They always have a cocktail yep. and a cig, and they're just, but you just become, until you can make money on your own yeah. and you spend all your money, mm -hmm. now it's just the, you're grifting, which right. somebody already said that's what they are. The, I think the Spotify guy, or I don't know, <laughs> somebody, somebody's, um, you know, and there's no reason to hate these people. I don't even know these people, and I don't even root for the royal family as an Irish Catholic. They've all done some very bad things yeah. historically as a unit. I'm not saying individually. I'm sure Prince William is a very nice person. Right. Or whatever, and maybe I think Harry. When you watch The Crown, you're like, yeah. <laughs> somebody forgot to talk to Harry. <laughs> somebody forgot to hug him. <laughs> He's always been a little shit. Yeah, that's fine. You're the second kid. You're supposed to be the little shit. Right. Um, but this whole plan that they're trying to carry out, it's not working. No. And their um, foundation, I don't even know how you say it, Archie Well or Archwell. Arch Archwell, why do they add the E? Arch E well. It's uh, here's your first problem. There's a lot of people. I went to college. I finished. And I don't know what your thing says. Archwell. Archie well. Archwell. But it's not even spelled like Archie. No. A-R-C-H-I-E. Yep. It's Arch A-R-C-H-E-W-E. -E. That's their foundation. Well, the donations have plunged after a rocky year. <laughs> Well, you're, they're both, you're both crazy. You go on Oprah and say, oh, they're a bunch of old white racists, which I think a lot of people would expect. Right. Chris Rock does a big joke about it. I'm, yeah. I'm not lifting material. I'm just saying we all thought that. Every single family, most likely, there's going to be one relative where you brief somebody before you go over there and go, 
Uncle so and so every now and then right. is liable to just I don't agree with the statements. It's just yeah. too late to change them, and it's part of the deal. Right. Um. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, they're trying to be producers and renowned philanthropists, but 2023 proved rocky for them. Well, the sociopath part two comes in. You go on Oprah and call these people a bunch of racists. Mm-hmm. That's what I said. And then Harry says, we didn't say that. Dude, it's on tape. You, you've implied it. Right. It's the very, very, and Oprah let them all get away with it. Right. And then she said, oh, our kids aren't getting security because they're black. No, it's no. because King Charles wasn't King Charles yet. Right. He can't. No, no, there's actual rules. Somebody should have fact checked that on the Oprah show and said, wait, here's the royal rules. Oprah doesn't fact check. Oprah don't care. No, Oprah don't care. I wouldn't care if I was no. Oprah either. Oprah. <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> uh, so their annual report, um, they have an 11 million drop in donations. They received uh, 2 million in a charitable contribution in 2022, but in 2021, they received close to 13 million. So we're dropping like flies. Yeah. Well, I'd have to say, what are you spending the money on? Right. Show me what you've done. Maybe they have done things. I don't know. They have chickens in their backyard. They do have chickens. I know. Why, why do uh, when people get that rich, they act like they're poor again? Yeah. Right. I can show you chickens all over Tennessee and Missouri. Right. And those people need those chickens. Those are not props. No. Those are not joke chickens. No. Those are chickens that somebody is like, I counted them and I have eight. Right. And there better be eight out in the morning if there's not. My friend Andrew had chickens right. till something got in and I ate mm-hmm. the chickens. Andrew did not secure his property well enough. Oh, hello, baby cat. Are you coming up for the podcast? Do you want to see the people? Oh! <laughs> Your voice is back. For a whole week, she didn't, when she would open her, she'd go, but nothing would come out. No. And I called, I called the vet, who's my neighbor. And I'm like, Curtis, I don't know what this means because I haven't had a cat since I was a kid. Hi, baby cat. You want to come up? Um, but my cat is opening her mouth to meow and nothing's coming out. <laughs> like, did she, and then I Googled it. Oh my God, don't do that. RSVP, she's got some lung infection. She'll be dead by Friday. <laughs> And he goes, well, Kathleen, maybe she don't feel much like talking. That's true. Uh, he, well, but she's trying. Come here. Come here. Come on. She's trying to talk, but her voice is back. It took a week. I think she ate the mangled bird. There was, come on. Come on. Up, up, up. Come she's here. so well trained. <laughs> oh, come on. She won't come up. All right. She's going to distract me. She likes to zoom. There's a lot of zooms. As a matter of fact, I'm going to post one today where we talked about Theranos. Um, a podcast, I forget the name of it, but it was super fun. And yeah. my friend Heather McDonald, she's a comedian too. Cool. She was on there. And uh, Baby Cat, you'll see lur- her lurking a lot. Come on. Come up. You got to move, Dolly. Here. She won't like that. Yeah, she doesn't like change. She hates the Christmas tree. <laughs> she hated the entire process. All right, go back down. Anyway, so nobody's giving them money. Harry and Megan. He did win some lawsuit in the United Kingdom, I saw, about uh, hacking phones. Nobody cares about your phone. (laughs) It's 2003 to 2007. Should the press be doing that? It's Rupert Murdoch. It's a Daily Mirror. It appears more and all that shit. Can't you just outfox these people? Like, I would tell them, here's my, you want, well, here's my phone number. (laughs) Go ahead, tap it. And then I'd get a different goddamn phone. Right. Even if you have to do walkie-talkies. Go yeah. backwards in time. Matter yeah. of fact, act like my parents do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Have an answering machine. One time I went in my mom and dad's basement. That's where the answering machine was located. So I know no one's doing anything. And I clicked um, on play yep. and they said, you have 130 messages. I didn't know there was that much tape in that wow. thing. And the one guy was like, hey, uh, I've been trying to get a hold of Jack now for a couple of years, years. And I'm like, don't have that on if you're not going to answer messages for years. No. People think you're dead. They're checking Facebook. Yeah. We don't care. They don't care. They just they don't. don't. No, they're like reaching pioneer people. <laughs> it's to the point now where I have to physically go over there to get someone to answer a question. <laughs> well, you never call. Oh, my God. I call 17 times a fucking day. <laughs> So a lot of times it goes beep the caller you are trying to reach and then it's been disconnected. It's not disconnected. No. I don't know what they do. <laughs> um, their uh, their Archie Well is centered around Sussex dedication to leading cause driven lives. Come on, too vague. It's very vague. Cause driven. 
What is my cause? My cause is to provide entertainment in a Bucky's outfit. Winner! <laughs> yes. I don't know. I just think they've played all their cards wrong. Yeah. You should have come over here quietly. Mark my words, they will move to Los Angeles. She will grow bored of Montecito, and I'm not blaming her. I, I, unless you have Ron White as your best friend and want to go golf every day right. and pretend like you don't have children, like Ron and I do, do not, right. we can just go golf and drink and frolic the day away. On a Tuesday. On, yeah, on Ron's dime, too. Yes, perfect. <laughs> I don't have a house in Montecito. <laughs> he did, though, and he had his little jet, and then he painted shark teeth all over the bottom of his private jet because he wanted wow. Oprah to think that his plane was going to eat her plane. And I'm like, well, the problem is, I don't think you've seen the size of Oprah's plane. It's, so bigger. it's just about seven planes bigger than yours. <laughs> so, And his was terrifying. I didn't know. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's your royal update. Yeah, $11 million drop in donations. That's not good. I don't know what the answer is. They need a new media consultant. They need somebody to go. First of all, I think they need to shut up. Exactly. Shut up. We're so sick of hearing about we know the complaints. They've been lodged. Yeah. Everyone's made a decision. Mm -hmm. We're good. What's the, What do you got to talk about next? Yep. And apparently she's going to write a book. Oh, God. <gasps> yeah. She's the new Elizabeth Holmes. Um, she... You know, I don't know. I don't think they played their cards right, though. And just go look, watch the movie in history repeating itself. Right. There's a million movies on YouTube about George and Wallace Simpson. Didn't pan out. <laughs> then he even tried to buddy up with the Nazis just to get a little press. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That didn't go well. I didn't go well. When you're out having cocktails with Hitler. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to, um, oh, not news. We got to do, holy shit, they found it. We have two. Okay. Um, hundreds of rare baseball cards from the 1920s discovered in a closet, including Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb. Oh. This guy is so lucky. So lucky. A California man made the discovery of a lifetime when cleaning out his late father's home. In a closet, he found more than 600 rare vintage baseball cards, Whoa. including Shoeless Joe Jackson and Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth. They were stored in an early 1900s Pedro Cut plug tobacco tin so oh, they're wow. still in good shape yeah um auction monthly released the news because they're going to sell the cards yeah. um he said his father began collecting cards as a kid growing up in oakland california in the early 20s i couldn't believe it was inside the old tobacco tin when i first opened up the lid and noticed more than 600 pre-war baseball cards all well preserved in the box when i opened the i was surprised to see iconic names like all the ones i mentioned Walter Johnson, Christy Matthewson. I began to imagine what it was like to be a kid in the 20, chasing the game's current greats. It also includes hundreds of rare Hall of Famers. Um, he has almost all the 19, 19 Black Sox, the White Sox, mm -hmm. the cheating team. Um, the scandal, whatever you want to call it. Um, how great would that be? That's cool. Right. I root through my mom and dad's house, and I find electric bills from um, the 80s. <laughs> It's not really that exciting. Hey, do we still need this? Well, what if we get audited? You don't work anymore, Dad. Stop it. Nobody's getting audited. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, seven years. That's all he'll scream out. Seven years. The IRS can go back seven goddamn years. Okay. Well, this bill says 1984. So how about can we... I feel like I'm dealing with hoarders where you show them a piece of paper and go, can we get rid of this? What? And then we have to have a discussion about no. some bullshit thing. This is kind of cool. A six-year-old girl who thought sonar detected an octopus may have found a 152-year-old shipwreck. What? Yep. Wow. Tim Wallach and his daughter Henley were fishing on Lake Michigan when their sonar picked up what archaeologists now may believe, uh, now believe may be a ship that ran aground during the deadly Peshtigo fire. Wisconsin, this is in Green Bay. Wisconsin archaeologists are crediting a man and his daughter with discovering the remains of the ship. Uh, they were fishing on Lake Michigan in the Bay uh, of Green Bay near Green Island when they're uh, in August. This happened in August when their sonar picked up. They thought it was an octopus. Would there really be an octopus in Lake Michigan? Well, no. Well, there's a lot of goldfish everywhere, so maybe. Gold, you think a goldfish is the same as an octopus? No, no, no I'm just saying people are dumping. Oh, you think someone dumped an octopus? Maybe. I thought they were only in salt water. I don't know that. All right. Are there freshwater octopus? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I said. Are there some in the Lake of the Ozarks? I oh, got to go check that out. Fresh, 
No, um, they're not. The, is there salt in Lake Michigan? I don't know. Well, I don't think so. Maybe there is. I don't know. I've oh. been in it. Um, the ship may be the 122-foot-long George L. Newman. The ship was hauling lumber from Little Sumico on the evening of October 8, 1871. It became, it became enveloped in thick smoke from the Pistigo fire and ran aground on the southeast point of Green Island. The keeper of the island's lighthouse rescued the crew, but the ship was abandoned and eventually covered with sand and forgotten. They're going to survey the wreck again in spring of 2024, and they may pu push it to the list of National Register of Historic Places. Cool. Well, I think they should put this little girl's picture up there. Yeah. Yeah. She's, he said it's, um, he goes, I don't know how we top it today. It said, I told her, I'm pretty sure there's no one else in her school that has found a shipwreck that nobody ever recorded before. I guess we'll just have to fish more so if we can find more shipwrecks. That's adorable. That's awesome. Yeah. Good job. Good job, little fisher lady. Good job. Good job. Um, moving on to news. In the Christmas spirit. Yeah. Uh-oh. This, this couple from Texas mm -hmm. made a Bucky's gingerbread house. So cool. <laughs> There's even tiny customers. What? It is so perfect. Well, I'm going to uh, post post it in the show notes, or you can go Google it yourself. Just Google uh, Bucky's gingerbread monument. Uh -huh. uh, Texas couple has made National Gingerbread House Day extra special by creating a cookie model of one of their favorite places, Bucky's. Dina and Paul Vaders of Georgetown, about 30 miles south of Austin, created a gingerbread replica of Bucky's located about an hour from their house in Bastrop, a place where they always stop that kind of gets our vacation started. That's great. Yeah. Um, they per we purchased all the vehicles, and we got all the candy and tried to make it happen. I've never seen anything this great. I mean, I wouldn't have the patience for it for even five seconds. Oh, um, it's cool. They even bought the little people that make up the village, so they were completing tasks like changing a tire, charging their Tesla, giving their dog a chance to stretch their legs. The details are insane. They have all the <laughs> gas pumps. People are getting gas. People are fixing their luggage. It's a travel stop on your way to vacation. To make matters worse, uh, make matters more festive, they pipe frosting all over the store, fuel stations, and on the ground in the trees to give the illusion of snow. Oh Santa God. and his reindeer were also included on top of the store preparing for takeoff. It's amazing. I'm looking at it. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, there's tiny little people. The, all the people, um, they use paper clips to stick them on so they're incorporated into the village. Um, so there you go. That's, That's a awesome. wonderful little Christmas Christmas surprise. Also, here's a wonderful thing if you're traveling. Okay. Are you going through San Francisco? Are you afraid of flying? Well, go up to any uh, guest services thing and say uh, you're scared to fly mm -hmm. and you would like to speak to Duke. Duke okay. is a tuxedo cat. If you don't know what a tuxedo cat, it's, it's at a black. The airport? He's at the airport. Oh. He's there to calm travelers. His name is Duke Ellington Morris. <laughs> He's joined the WAG Brigade to calm anxious travelers. He's old, too, and he, so I'm sure he's calm. Mm -hmm. um, he's been hired as the newest employee of the U.S. airport. Um, the appointment of the 14-year-old black and white cat was announced by the airport's Twitter account. Please welcome the newest WAG Brigade member, Duke Ellington Morris. Oh, cool. He has a tiny pilot's hat on. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's there to soothe anxious travelers. They're, they already have other ones. I've seen him in some airport, but it wasn't San Francisco. I think I saw him in Seattle. Not a cat. I've only seen dogs. Minneapolis, I saw Initially, the crazy. scheme was limited to dogs, but over time it's been expanded to include cats, rabbits, and even the world's first therapy pig, Lilu. Huh. Mm hmm. Lilu? Mm -hmm. Lilu. Um, they're selected for their temperament and behavior and must be certified by San Francisco's SPCA, and they must have completed all of their therapy programming. I guess they take him to classes. <laughs> I don't yes. know. Oh, Duke was initially rescued um, from a feral colony in 2010 when he was still a kitten. He was wow. adopted by a, a five-year-old girl and her mother who had him as a certified therapy animal. That's amazing. Yeah. So if you're going through San Francisco, I would go ask, even though I'm not afraid to fly. I would just lie and say, I'm afraid to fly. Can I please see Duke? Can I meet Duke? <laughs> Bring Duke. Bring, Bring Duke, Duke to, to me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's go into sports for a second. Okay. Okay. Um, there's, I have a few here because this is crazy. People like the sports section. Some people like sports. I, there's a lot of football news. I went to the Titans game. How was it? Well, you know, 
It was a. Fun. I always have fun. There's a lot of whiskey tents, moonshine tents. It's a fun atmosphere. I have a bunch of friends that are down there. I know where they're all stay. I can find people and stuff, have a good time. But it was a beautiful, nice day for winter. It was like 52. Awesome. Sun was out. But they're so bad. Mm-hmm. And then my friend uh, Ryan and I were talking, and he's like, I don't even know. They're so bad, I don't know what's wrong. It reminds me of every science experiment I tried in high school that would fail completely. And then the teacher would say, Kathleen, where do you think this went wrong? Fuck if I know. All of it. All of it. I hate science. I shouldn't be forced to be in here. Let me go to history. I don't like this because I don't know. It could be the first thing I did, the second, third, fourth. That's how I feel about the Titans. Is it the coach? I don't know. Could be. Is it the offensive line coordinator? Maybe. How about the players? Well, I don't know. Some are good. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Derrick Henry. I feel terrible for Derrick Henry. We don't, there's not a quarterback that's really solid. It's just a mess. Um, And they lost. And I don't even care if at this point if they win or lose. You just want to see football happen. And it kind of happened. How was the moonshine? Uh, The moonshine was great. (laughs) Uh, The hot dog was great. Uh, Yeah, they have normal food. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it wasn't for NFL revenue sharing, I don't know how these teams exist. The bottom bowl was probably three fourths full the next layer which would be like the 200 seats half mm-hmm. and then the 300 seats maybe a third full and they still had i mean and you're going to build a new stadium and then they had the balls to put up on the thing season tickets there's an increase in coming for 2024 you don't have anyone here that is not the message to put up right now oh my god but if you this is even this one even beats it hold on i gotta find it did you wear your chiefs I did not wear my Chiefs hat. I have a Titan sweatshirt. I will just because they need extra fans. Yeah. But if the Chiefs aren't down, I wear all my Chiefs stuff. Nice. Yeah, if I'm here. Yeah. Or better if I'm in Kansas City. Yeah, of course, my Chiefs stuff. Um, you can go. So if you don't follow football, mm-hmm. the worst team right now is the Carolina Panthers. Yes. Um, and they're not even smart enough to just be horrible. Right. Don't win at this point. No. Just don't because don't. you're going to get the best draft pick. Mm-hmm. Tickets. We're 45 cents. What? To an NFL game. What? And then if you went on StubHub, um, <laughs> at, on Ticketmaster, they were $56. But on the uh, resale sites, they went anywhere from 45 cents to $5. Oh, my God. Then That's... there were pictures of the game starting. I mean, it's, a beer. it's my old joke. I used to have a joke where I'm like, uh, the, the, so, oh, the, the Rams were so bad at some point. You know it's a bad game when there's people going, hey, get out of my section. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a ticket? No, 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 I'm in 320. I got all this. (laughs) The Carolina Panthers are valued by Forbes at $4.1 billion. The team currently has a $141 million payroll for the 2023 season. So it could surprise some people to see that their tickets have plummeted to 45 cents. Now, they're not even getting in people for to see the opposing team. Right. Like, uh, it's not real easy. Like Nashville. <laughs> well, Nashville's a destination city. Vegas a destination city. Um, Yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte's not easy to get to either. Southwest will get you there, but, I mean. It's an American hub. It's an American hub? Yep. Yeah. I'm not in love with American <laughs> Airlines. I don't know about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're one in twelve. You should have never won that one game. Nope. Nope. Don't do it. They won last weekend with the forty-five. Cents. Forty-five cents. Yeah. Um, it's just I, I don't know how we keep these horrible teams. There needs to be me. You can't have teams this bad. I mean, I guess you can. Um, that's what it costs. Meanwhile, another team that's doing fine, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence. Um. One of their employees stole $22 million from the team. What? Yep, nobody noticed. <gasps> <laughs> There's a comedy club. I won't mention the name because I don't want to embarrass my friend. But uh, one of the employees stole, like, $2 million. What? I'm like, how do you not have, like, when you bartended, at least when I bartended. So if you had your m- m- money drop that night, you had it in a bag, and then I'd have to say, there's, uh, you know, $3,200 in here. And then there'd be another bartender 
that would yeah, have wow. to sign out and count on that. That way I couldn't. But like the one, the comedy club that that happened to, it was just a lady. Yeah. So the bartender would say, hey, there's, and hand it into the accounting lady. And he'd say, whatever, there's three grand in here. She'd say, oh, it was 2,500 and oh. keep the 500. Oh. Well, that's a lot of cash back then too. But I mean, this happened now. A former Jacksonville Jaguar employee is accused of stealing $22 million from the franchise from 2019 to 2023 by exploiting the organization's virtual credit card program and that he used the money to buy, among other things, two vehicles, a condo, a designer watch worth $95,000. Wow. He's also, he also um, purchased a bunch of crypto and he placed bets. And I'm going to tell you how bad of a better he was. <laughs> That's what you really His name was Amit, yeah. A-M-I-T, Patel. Yeah. He worked for the Jaguars uh, for five years. Um, the team terminated his employment. Well, right. <laughs> how'd you, how do you, how does this happen though? You guys, right. how did the years this went on? Mm -hmm. I mean, I am not good at math, but no. eventually when you're like, I don't know, we seem like a few million short. Don't you have a little <laughs> no. meeting and yeah. look around? I mean, um, uh, yeah, wow. his titles during those years were coordinator, financial planning and analysis, and then manager, financial planning and analysis. Yeah. That's crazy. He was making fraudulent transactions. I don't, it doesn't really say how he got busted in the end. Um, but he was a legendary bad better, they said. <laughs> and are you betting, are you using your real account? Are you using... Um, Is that why he stole? He was well known for terrible gambling prowess. Oh. Mm, biggest loser ever on FanDuel. Wow. And legendary bad at sports wag wagering court at ESPN's David Purdom. Wow. A second fantasy player told it that Patel would often submit lineups with players who weren't starting the game and at times wouldn't submit a lineup at all. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's not how you play fantasy football. You no. have to pay attention. Yeah. Um, wow. he, had, he entered several that had $24,000 buy-ins and bet nearly $500,000 on fantasy tournaments over the past six years per worldwide leader, whatever oh that God. is. He was charged with nine wire fraud and illegal monetary transaction and for an embezzlement scheme that took place from 2019 to now. Wow. I mean, how the fuck? <laughs> he lost 99% of the stolen money through oh gambling and daily fantasy. <laughs> how bad are you at fantasy? Nobody in our league, the leagues that we all have established, no one's this bad. No. It's like yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Um, That's insane. <laughs> and then he was trying to chase the money. Wow. Yeah. Wow, Jacksonville, you, wow, I, I don't know. You got to fire a lot of people yeah. to let this happen. This you got to, a lot. Um, <laughs> this is the last thing. This isn't really sports. Okay. So I follow on Twitter. There's a thing, Super Sports 70. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's all old sports stuff, but it's usually just silly, like right. funny. You know, pictures of people in the NFL players in the locker room drinking beers at halftime, smoking cigs. <laughs> Nobody cared. No. So 50 years ago in 1969, mm -hmm. if that's 50 years, I don't know. Not really. Ish. 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 Um, uh, at the Minneapolis Vikings game, mm -hmm. the Minnesota Vikings, in, it was in Minneapolis. They, for the halftime show, if you go back and look at old halftime shows, I mean, people's expectations now are ridiculous. Like one of the, the, the displays at this halftime show was to get one of those giant, like a trampoline type, Thing, and they just bounced a person up in the air. And we were supposed to, well, that's what we thought was entertaining back then, I guess. I don't know. I mean, this is even before me. But um, they put a kid in a hot air balloon. His parents owned the company. The mom got in the balloon. And then the mom, she saw a rope break. And the mom got out of the balloon. And the boy got in it. He's 11. It's her son. And then all the ropes broke. And the hot air balloon took off with the kid. <laughs> And, the, and I'm going to read you the interview with him. He's now older and a lawyer and all this. He lived. But it, it there's if you go online to that, well, I'll get the link. It it passed the stadium lights, which would have burnt the balloon to pieces, burnt him to death. So he got lucky, and he went out of the stadium, and then they just continued on with the game. Like, what? yep, yep. You know, yeah. Um, this kid... So he kept flying and flying 
and he landed in some frozen river in in <laughs> Minneapolis, and he he swam to shore like twenty five in a snowsuit, so which is gonna sink you. And he he said the whole time. Well, I'll tell you what he said, but he got to land and just started walking till somebody found, found him. him. <laughs> but then they found the balloon in the river without him, right. and they thought he died. I mean. This is the kind of halftime show I need more of. I want to launch children, right. ones that agree. I'm not saying against their will. Uh -huh. Billy, Tommy, will you get in a balloon? <laughs> I don't know where you're going to land. Totally. <laughs> you good? In downtown, it is downtown Minneapolis law office. Attorney Rick Snyder recalls the a big event as a little boy. I was in shock, he said. Looking back these many years, one clearly sees that there are special moments in everyone life, everyone's life that defines us. Seeing the ground drop away from underneath me, I'd never been on a balloon that high before, Snyder oh said. God. It was in uh, the old Metropolitan Stadium in, in uh, Minneapolis, December 14th, 1969. So it's freezing <laughs> in Minnesota at this point. I didn't know enough to be scared. I was only 11. The Minnesota Vikings were playing the San Francisco 49ers. They had won the game 10-7 to and soon to be headed to their first Super Bowl game against the Kansas City Chiefs. All these years later, Snyder still has a large scrap book recalling that fateful day he would be part of a vikings halftime show that would go terribly and dangerously wrong oh his parents owned a hot air balloon and they were there to take part in the show that was going to promote the upcoming saint paul winter carnival they were going to launch the hot air balloon about 200 feet on a tether so it was going to be tethered like he wasn't supposed to just oh, leave wow. the stadium <laughs> and they were going to take it up with somebody in it take it down the length of the field and just pull it back the plan, that was the plan anyway. When the balloon didn't lift off the frozen Met Stadium field with Snyder's mom inside, she soon jumped out, but her kid jumped in. Oh, wow. It was frozen to the thing. They didn't figure that. The basket was frozen to the thing. Oh. So she got out, uh -huh. and then the kid got in, and it just melted, no. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, wow. That worked. It certainly went up. I guess when he jumped in, he pounded it off the ice. The problem is it kept going because the rope connected somehow failed. That's when the stadium, stadium snow-covered fans watched as Snyder flew solo in the hot air balloon basket up, up, and away. <laughs> the flight was just seconds old when he narrowly missed the scorching hot stadium lights, which oh. would have spelled certain disaster. Yeah. Stadium, stadium spectators thought this was all part of the show and that the balloon was supposed to fly oh out of the God. stadium. Oh Unfortunately, the 11-year-old's troubles were only just beginning. Not only was he flying into the path of oncoming air traffic at Minneapolis Airport, oh but he disappeared into the clouds. Oh, my God. <laughs> <coughs> this had to be so terrifying if you were a parent. Yeah. Because I had one of my nephews. I was the Grand Marshal of the St. Louis Mardi Gras Parade. and wait, he really? Yes. Well, don't think it's that big of an honor. The year before that, it was a bulldog. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, it was a bulldog. Well. Yep. They just pick random funny things. Um, the Mardi Gras one in St. Louis is the second biggest. But anyway, I lost my nephew. He got out of the convertible on a whim, mm -hmm. and I, I it was horrifying. Mm -hmm. I'm in the car, and I turn around, and he's gone. Oh. And there's 200,000 people, maybe, a sea of people, and he has red hair, thank God. Oh. Super red hair. The best. But I was like, where the fuck? I can't lose that kid. Right. It's not my kid to lose. Oh, my God. I, I don't know. Wow. Anyway, I found him. But this had to be terrifying for these people. The FAA took immediate action <laughs> to close all air traffic while Snyder's wayward balloon proceeded to the southeast. After a three-mile flight. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's 11. <laughs> and he was able to release some of the hot air. How smart is this kid? And the balloon quickly descended directly into the frigid and slush-filled waters of the Minnesota River. That's when the basket tipped, um, throwing Snyder into the river. Without his weight, the balloon then flew away unpiloted. Oh my God. Snyder remembers landing in the river. It was filled with slush, so I was swimming, swimming through slush, he said. With his waterlogged snowmobile suits, boots, and helmet, he swam 25 yards to shore. To his good fortune, a photographer was in the area and soon snapped a photograph of the stunned boy oh climbing God. onto the riverbank. The man would bring back Snyder back to Met Stadium, where the Viking team doctor checked him over and put his wet clothes in a dryer. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. Hey, buddy, could you do me a favor? I know you're busy. Yeah. Um, Super cold. They were out searching and following the path of the balloon and not realizing it had landed and taken off again. 
His folks finally spotted the balloon resting in a snow-covered farmer's field. My poor mom and dad wandered onto the field through the deep snow, only to get to the balloon, and I wasn't in it. They lost it at that time, he said. With the help of CB radios, the parents packet, parent, panic parents were soon told the good news. Their son Rick was alive and well at the Vikings locker room. They would soon be reunited with the happy ending being told in newspapers across the country. Looking back at the monuments events from 50 years ago, he smiled and said, I feel like I dodged a lot of bullets through that situation. <laughs> yeah. oh, Light poles, planes, yeah. clouds. Um, they keep a fabric of the balloon, if you're interested. And um, the Vikings, uh, it's on a halftime history in Minnesota aviation lore is now a permanent display at the Wings Museum of the North. This is what I want for Christmas. I want 11-year-olds put in hot air balloons without any steering. <laughs> or, or, and that's our halftime show. Or parental supervision. <laughs> <laughs> Be free. No, <laughs> oh, the 60s. Um, <laughs> bad news for King Charles, and I don't mean the royal one. I mean Charles Barkley, and I love Charles Barkley. Oh. This is why everyone at CNN should be fired. Um, first of all, nobody cares about Anderson Cooper's grief anymore. No. Okay, could we no. stop with that? I know his mom was Gloria Vinovich and she made jeans, and I'm sorry she died, but I just don't. She, she made good jeans. I had to have a pair in high school. Everybody did, she even my mom. Um, I'm so sick of that. But also, that CNN decided it would be a good idea to have Charles Barkley and Gail King do a show. So Gail King is fine for the morning. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows she's she was Oprah's friend. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she had a career of some sort. I have no idea what she did or what she didn't do. But nobody really, like, I love, Char people love Charles Barkley or hate Charles Barkley. Nobody has that strong feelings about, and yeah. don't put him in a suit and don't put him on that set. No. I taped it because I thought it was about King Charles, the other one. The, the of course you did. Well, I did because I like to keep on my, on my royal things. I like to keep an eye on those people. <laughs> Not another incident. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure they behave. Um, <laughs> after watching The Crown, oh my God, we'll talk about that too. But um, so it's just stupid. Right. Like the whole concept that would have went, no one's going to watch this because Charles isn't really getting to be real Charles. Right. He's in a suit. The set is horrible. Mm -hmm. Gail, whatever. I know you have a show on Sirius. Good for you. Do you have a morning show? Morning, she's a morning show person. Right. This is. Um, it's our, the show's already on the rocks. Despite unprecedented pre-launch fanfare, the premiere of the talk show was a total flop. Cause I recorded it thinking it was something about King Charles. And then I turned it on. First of all, terrible name. Don't name the show King Charles. Yeah. When we just Cause we already have a King Charles and the crown is on. It's all too confusing. Yeah. Um, the show's premiere garnered more than less, fewer than 500,000 viewers. Oh my God. Yeah. Charles can talk about politics. He can talk about whatever he wants. I love him. He should run for office. I'd vote for him. Yes. But... This is not the venue for him. No. CNN had bet bizarre this bizarre combos current events talk show to help raise the rating. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Insiders claim. Or it's the wrong partner. Charles can be on, but we got to think of somebody else. Yeah. Not Gail. No. Gail's overexposed anyway. Right. She's on everything. Charles and Snoop. It's like Hoda and those other people. I, yeah. You know, oh, my God. How do they do that for four hours in the morning? Charles and Snoop. I would, Charles and Snoop would be great. Yeah. Or get somebody super funny with Charles. It would have been great if my friend Vic Henley was still alive because he knows Charles mm -hmm. because they went to Auburn. And he could be like, the, well, here's what we're going to talk about. And he got that other thing. He, talk, he used to talk really fast like that. A fashion talker from the South I ever met. Never uh -huh. met anybody in the South talk that fast. Um, Gail considers herself a serious journalist. Well, I consider myself a serious person. Do I look like it? No. <laughs> I'm not a serious person. Um... I don't know. I mean, Charles, I'm not, I would never tell somebody stick with sports because I hate it when they tell me stick with comedy. Yeah. If you just try to even say something about something else, people go absolutely bad shit. Mm -hmm. Charles can talk about whatever he wants. I don't care. I'll right. watch. Right. But this, oh. yeah. um, Gail tells Charles he should really study up on serious topics they discuss on their King Charles show and really pour over producers' notes. He's not going to do all that. But Charles is like, I got to be me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody tells Charles Barkley how long Charles Barkley's going to be funky. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just a bad combo. Yeah. It won't be on long. I mean, I don't know who's in charge of CNN. But you know what also CNN sucks? I've been waiting for the Iceland uh, volcano mm -hmm. to erupt because I follow it because I'm a weather freak. On the podcast. 
uh, and I, yeah, I even stopped talking about it here because it, it, it didn't erupt. It's been like a month, and those people had to move. I don't know. I've, I assume the Scandinavian companies, countries have that all figured out because I'm like, where do you send a whole town and say, I don't know how long it's going to be? Right. But I think those countries have that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is in case of the volcano. We have yeah. all of you have a home. You will be staying with the Andersons. You will be staying with the Gustafsons for an unlimited amount of time. We have built extra homes behind homes for events just like this. Happy Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I turned on CNN and the Weather Channel, my favorite. Well, I turned on all the news. Nobody has a volcano because it's pre-taped shows. BBC. BBC is always the greatest one, and it has no opinions. Right about American politics, so they'll just tell you flat out what happened. Mm -hmm. I like all that. I don't need a panel of 50 people no. telling me what they think. I don't even know who these people are anymore. Right. When they started panels, this is how old I am. For instance, mm -hmm. Pat Buchanan used to be on a panel. Now, do I agree with Pat Buchanan? No. no. But do I respect Pat Buchanan for his yeah. experience and, and his knowledge on these subjects? Yes, I do. Right. But now they're just like, here's some wingnut Who's going to talk about, I'm, and I have to Google these people. Then why am I listening to you? Right. All right, I'm going too crazy on this subject. But bottom line is, the only place I could find <laughs> volcano stuff was social media. Right. And then the media wonders why they're dying. Right. Because you need a headline news again. Mm -hmm. Headline news, just yeah. news. Headlines, what's happening right? I need to be, if something happens, I want to be able to turn on TV and see it. Right. Nope. You forced me back to. My phone. <laughs> you're right. My phone and Zuckerberg and all the people. Here, here's why we, I should have been born in the wrong country in the wrong decade. Okay. Up until 1956, French children attending school were served wine on their lunch breaks. What? Each child was allowed up to a half liter a day. <laughs> Happy, merry Christmas. And there's a picture of a child who appears to be about four holding a half a glass of red wine. <laughs> And she has a wet, she has a bottle on a tiny table next to her. And she's sitting on a really nice chair. I'm like this kid is happy. Yeah, a half liter. Wow, you're four. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, uh, yeah, good for them. The French just know how. Speaking of the French, speaking of the French, oh my god, oh. Marie Antoinette had a chair. I hope so. And it, she had a lot of chairs in, yeah. in Versailles. Mm -hmm. Versailles. Versailles, <laughs> as we say it in Missouri. Mm -hmm. That's the next town down from Osage Beach. Well, it's like three towns more, but it's. I used to play them in uh, sports in mm -hmm. high school. We'd have to go to Versailles. <laughs> there are so many towns in Missouri named with French names mm -hmm. because we had a lot of French settlers. And boy, have we just mangled them. After two years of high school French, I was like, oh my God, this whole city <laughs> is saying everything wrong. Right. Creve Corps. Oh, no. Or Creve Coeur. Right. <laughs> Versailles. Versailles. Or Versailles. Marie Antoinette chair sells for $2.8 million. And let me tell you what, I'm looking at it. It doesn't even have arms. It's not comfortable. Not comfortable. This is a very uptight, get your back right Ooh. kind of chair. Yeah. Um, it was at Sotheby's in Paris. It set a record for a single 18th century chair. The sale was the first in a series of four physical and online auctions being held this month, featuring the collection of the late Hubert Gurriand Hermé, a fifth-generation descendant of Terry Hermé, founder of the French luxury house. Wow. Yeah, the Louis XVI gilt walled walnut chair made circa 1784-85, ignited a flurry of bidding. <laughs> it was one of 60 pieces sold. Mm -hmm. Who has this shit in their house to no sell idea. it? Ridiculous. Right. Um, they had a thousand other items, too, being auctioned off. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Can you imagine that? No. $2.8 million for this chair. This is the chair you just get your picture in. You cannot, Kathleen, give me your wine. Why? You're in the chair. You're in the expensive chair. You can't have any drinks in the chair. What if it's a clear drink? What if it's Chardonnay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you have it. 2.8. What's sad is I can't see what color it is because I printed this out in black and white because I'm tired of using all my ink. Really? Finally? Yep. You got to cut. It's budgetary reasons. It's not even the budget. I just don't like getting ink. 
pain in the ass. You want to get a manicure by a robot? Sure. I saw the video. It's fucking amazing. Yeah? Yeah. This is at Target now. Really? I love Target. My sister said, it's too expensive. Everything in there don't work it. Okay, well, where are we going to go? Walmart? No. I don't. Walmart's just going to make you sad. I agree. It's a sad, mm-hmm. even at Christmas, I go in. Now, here's the thing. They do have good avocados. But I also don't like Wait, going in there because I don't think they pay their people right. Avocados? Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, in the South, <laughs> it makes no sense to me, but their produce sucks. Right. It makes no sense because we're... Not that far away from produce compared to, say, Connecticut. Florida, Georgia. Florida, Florida. Georgia. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, I like Target. It's happier. Mm-hmm. Um, consider your go-to Target shopping trip. A few groceries, some beauty products, cat food, a new dress you definitely didn't need, and a robot manicure. For some Target visitors, the future of nail art is just a Target runaway. The big box behemoth is rolling out new robot-based manicures. Um, They're going to liberate us from the everyday uh, mundane task. One task is the manicure, which uses both AI and 3D technology for the meticulous, mess-free application. You should see the machine goes around your fingernail. It draws a line, Uh and then it paints it. Oh, great. Yeah. It's only available at six targets. All right, termites. (laughs) Here you go. Here you go. one in, including one in Minnesota's, uh, in Minnesota, Minnesota is the home base of Target. Now, people who don't travel would not know that. I know that because I've been, I stay in downtown Minneapolis when I have shows. Mm-hmm. And then when COVID hit, that's what really hurt downtown Minneapolis because all the Target people were staying home and there's a lot of them down there. Yeah. So there goes your happy hour crowd, your lunch hour crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had a tough time through that. But anyway, if you didn't know it, that's where Target is based. It's their home deal. Nice. Um there's gonna be. There's already three in Texas, and two in, Cal- in California. Cool. Your first visit is only eight dollars, and ten after. Simply book online and show up with bare nails for your appointment, and voila. That's awesome. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Wait till you see the machine if you look at the show notes, or just Google it. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Um, TikTokers have been documenting the experience. Of course they have. Under awesome. robot hashtag robot manicure. So if you want to go on TikTok, okay. hashtag robot manicure, okay. so you can see. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not 100% foolproof yet. A human attendant must be remain nearby to make sure the machines don't get clogged or paint outside the lines. Wouldn't it be funny if you pulled your hand back and there's just paint? Paint <laughs> polish everywhere. Um, if you don't live in one of the six existing locations, it may be a bit of a wait. This is a small test and learn initiative. Well, get it out there. I'll try it. If you do live in one of those places, check your local listings. That's all I'm going to tell you to do that. That's I would totally great. do that. That's fantastic. Yes, totally fantastic. Um, well, you know what? I have, we're going to, um, well, we'll sign out with what are you watching. Okay. But this one, this makes me laugh. Who's a morning person? Pa, moi. I am. You, Paddle's your morning person? Yeah. Well, you and Dolly Parton. Me and Stevie are sleeping in. Stevie doesn't even <laughs> roll anywhere until about three, right. which I think is a bit crazy. I can't do that. Right. I'm up by nine. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Nine. If you are a morning person, you might have your Neanderthal genes to thank for that. What? Neanderthals were morning people, a new study <laughs> suggests, and some humans who like getting up early might credit genes that they inherited from their Neanderthal ancestors. Wow. A new study compared DNA to humans' genetic material retrieved from Netherland fossils. Turns out, uh, I'm sorry, Neanderthal. Mm -hmm. It turns out Neanderthal carried some of the same clock-related genetic variants as do people who report being early risers. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now you decide what that says about you. Since the 1990s, studies of Neanderthal DNA have exposed our species' intertwined histories. About 700 years, 1,000 years ago, our lineages split apart, most likely in Africa. While the ancestors of modern humans stayed largely in Africa, the Neanderthal lineage, lineage migrated to Eurasia. Ooh. Well, then my people stayed in Africa. Yeah. I don't know how they got to Ireland. That was a very long, lost walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, about 400,000 year, popula- years ago, the population split into two. The hominins, who spread 
west became Neanderthals. Their cousins to the east developed into a group known as the Denisovans. The two groups lived for hundreds of thousands of years, hunting game and gathering plants before disappearing from the fossil record about 40,000 years ago. By then, modern humans had expanded out of Africa, sometimes interbreeding with Neanderthals and Denisovans. Den, Den, so. <laughs> so. so, I'm one of the other group. I'm part of the Denny's. Denny's. I'm not part of the, yeah. Um, then it goes into science things that are way too hard. Just trust me. No. If you're an early, if you are genetically inclined to wake up early, you're a Neanderthal. Well, and I you know. can live with that. I'm a Denny. I gotta think about that. Think about it. Yeah. Do you really want to be that person? Yes. Um, I tried to look up for you guys as a year-round wrap-up thing, Nostradamus and Baba Vanga predictions for 2024. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. They're not specific and it's just what I would consider. Now, it's a lot to say that they predicted these things a long, long time ago mm -hmm. because how would they know right. what would be happening now? But what they predicted is already what's happening. Okay. Climate change, um, hacking. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything like, you know, bad weather, famine. But, uh, I mean, back then, how would you have known of hacking? Mm -hmm. Like, so I give them credit. Nostradamus, he gets credit. Baba Vanga, the lady flew around and then was blind. Um, she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't really say... The only thing Nostradamus is predicting mm -hmm. is that Prince Harry might become king. Oh, come on. Well, I know. This oh, is where no. he's going to hashtag fail. Um, one of the passages in his long text says, the king of the Isles will be driven out by force. Some think Nostradamus is referring to King Charles. Another passage supportedly about Charles says, soon afterwards, after a disastrous war... A new king shall be anointed, who for a long time will appease the earth. Well, the kings don't have the power for that anymore. No. 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 He didn't see that coming either. Wow. Um, I wish there was something more. Um, the end of kings. Yeah. Climate disaster. A new pope. Yeah. I like this pope. I like this pope. Uh -huh. um, but, I mean, as far as popes go, we can only expect so much liberal activity. Uh -huh. It's out of a very conservative group. He's awfully old, though. Let's see, old, let's see yeah. how old he is. How old is Pope Frank? That's what we call him in my house. My dad loves calling him Pope Frank. <laughs> I'd say 86. Oh. Yeah. 87. 87. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, his birthday is December 17th. December 17th. Um, yeah. He just had a birthday. Yeah. Um, Nostradamus says, through the death of a very old pontiff, a Roman good age will be a Roman of good age will be elected. Of him it will be said that he weakens his C S E E. But long he will sit. He gets blind. Oh. He gets blind. Pope Francis has been having health issues too. Mm. Pope Frank is on the downside, I think. Pope Frank um, looks happy. He had to skip the UN. He looks happy and he looks friendly. Yeah, I didn't like that German one. He had beady eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're out. And by the way, a termite on Twitter somewhere told me he died. I didn't realize he died. Mm -hmm. That guy. Um, this year, uh, Nostradamus predicted the coming of the Antichrist as well as a full-blown World War III. So if you were looking for the Antichrist, he's probably coming this year, course, according to Nostradamus. <laughs> Bear down. We got an election coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the Pope had to skip a big thing. So before we go, I'm just going to tell you guys, if you want to watch, because I hadn't, Sometimes I miss this segment because it's right after Queen News. Um, okay, so a bunch of termites told me to go watch Mother of God. Mm -hmm. It's on HBO. Or it mm -hmm. might be Child of Mother of God. It's a cult, cult thing. Of, cult of God? Of cult of Mother? Mother God. Cult of Mother God. It's in, in Colorado in one of these just, you know, shit show, out in the middle of nowhere, trailers, junky houses. You don't know what's going on out there. H no, I know it's on HBO, but what's it called? Uh, the Cult of Mother God. The Cult of Mother God. Lewis watched it, too. He made it through all three episodes. What? Yeah, oh, yeah. right. Well, my friend Bronson told me to watch it, too. Every, there was a lot of, hey, why aren't you on this? <laughs> this lady, um, first of all, I'm not sure if we can call it a cult if you only have, like, 20 followers. I mean, right. that's like an AA meeting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bad open mic night. Um <laughs> But she has this board of cutout heads of celebrities 
that she says, speak to her. The main one being Robin Williams. And I know I knew Robin Williams and I'm here to tell you, he was too smart to be talking to that lady. (laughs) Um, And then these people, it's just amazing how many lost people there are. They gave her all of their money. And then like two, these parents are like, I don't know what's wrong with my kid. Um, but there's a tipping point where you can't get them back and you're, then they, they have to call cult experts and the cult experts just say, tell them, don't say anything bad about the cult or then they're never going to talk to you. But then you got to appease all this bullshit. This is where my Irish would get up and I'd be like, no, you're not talking. This lady is an alcoholic anorexic. Who's not speaking to Robin Williams. I guarantee you that. (laughs) But she had like David Bowie. I just want to take a picture of that board. Trump. I mean, yeah. it's just, just all over the, the, the gamut. She runs the gamut from Celine Dion to, mm-hmm. to like, who, how? <laughs> but anyway, you'll see it in the opening thing, so it's not a spoiler alert. No. They kept her body. She also drank that uh, colloidal silver, which turns you blue, oh. and I only knew that because I watched Oprah back in the day, and she had a blue man on. He was the first blue man group guy. I'm kidding. <laughs> Joke. Um, yeah, he's the grandpa. And he drank, that was like a cure-all thing, I don't know, in the 80s, 70s, I don't know. And if you drank it too much, you turn blue, and it doesn't unturn itself. You stay blue. Well, they kept her dead body in the house, and the the FBI and cops shined a flashlight, and there was a corpse that's been laying there. They said she was at rest. Oh, my God. She's mummified. I don't know that it deserved three episodes on HBO, because 20 people is not a cult to me. Mm -hmm. 20 people is a fucked up gathering mm-hmm. of people that have lost their way and they're going to give all this money to this lady. Mm-hmm. But worth a watch if you like cults. Right. Or if you're into... And this one was so, so strange mm-hmm. that I vote yes. Two thumbs up. Okay. Don't think it probably deserved that. Um, I okay. finished Bye Bye Barry about Barry Sanders. That was good. If you like sports mm-hmm. or you just want a human interest story, why does someone quit their job when they're at the height of their job and and could break all the records in the world, and he just walked away. It's it's a great. Well, I think the father has a lot to do with it yeah. when you watch it. So those two basketball players, the Ball brothers and their father, the the one that overtakes. It's it's like for a while there, Venus and Serena's father that that it wouldn't shut up, and he's taking over interviews. And mm-hmm. sometimes you get that parent that just won't. Stop. At the Hall of Fame, Barry Sanders' father went up first. And no, Grandpa, what? sit down. Yeah. And he gave a big speech and didn't even really congratulate Barry. He said the greatest running Brown of all time, Jim Brown. Name somebody else. Like, whatever. And then he said he was the best in the world. Well, of course. <laughs> I mean, of course. And The Crown. Loved it. So great. Great ending. Great ending. And the ending with Philip, the guy who plays Philip. Mm-hmm. He's the guy from Thrones. I just love that mm-hmm. actor guy, whoever the hell he is. Some old British guy. Um <laughs> in the shame scene he was part of that weird religious deal in thrones um he says at the end nobody on the outside knows why we're even still here and we on the inside don't even know he said we're a dying breed meaning her and him here's your role and now what is it it was just a great ending um they did the whole prince margaret thing of her and um all yeah well you know yeah she, she was a party girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why whenever they say, well, 50 years of cigs and whiskey can do this, I'm like, oh, thank God I drink beer. <laughs> I think the hard liquor is harder on you. I'm not sure of that. There's no scientific proof in my no. mind of that. I'm just throwing that out there. And uh, so that was wonderful if you love the crown. Mm-hmm. And the Gilded Age so picked it up, mm-hmm. nailed it. Yep. Um, just great. And there you have it, termites. Well, I've watched some good Hallmark ones. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I told you guys, go watch. It's called Laughing All the Way. It's about a comedian. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. Even there was what about a pop star? Yeah. Uh, uh, she's like half half Mexican, half American. Mm-hmm. And it was cute enough. But right. I don't know why they don't consult. Like, just call an agent. Any agent, music agent in Los Angeles and go, what would be the proper terms? Like at one point in the show, they go, we're going to throw a tour. I mean, <laughs> we don't throw a tour. What kind of like language is that? Like like a party, like we're throwing a tour. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Normal people, non-Hollywood people would know that. Non-musicians would know that. Um, 
Uh, the Heidelberg one was good. Uh, I can't remember. There's so many. And there's so many. There's a lot of orphans, a lot of widows. I get them confused after a while. Um, but it they there have been a, some okay ones. Um, and um, What are you doing for Christmas? Well, I'll be in the Ozarks for Christmas. And I've already made uh, six dozen cookies what? for my dad. Wow. And he will eat them all. He's not even fat. Good I don't even you. understand it. Yeah, it took me um, from three o'clock till time football came on. Wow, four and a half hours. Good girl. Yeah, but I put them in the freezer. Nice. Yeah, they're great. They'll last forever. Mm-hmm. They can take them to Florida. Florida. I, uh, I don't know how that's all going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? Um, I'll be in those hours. Um, and then next year, New Year's plans. New Year's plans. Um, in the works. Yeah. I don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. I don't really, I don't work on New Year's uh-huh. because after Y2K, all the clubs, which thank God I don't have to do the clubs anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just too hard to sell a hard ticket on New Year's Eve. People want to, now people stay home and have house parties. Yeah. That's the thing, which is smart. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go to a bar on New Year's Eve. I'm with the general public enough. Yeah. Like if I go drinking, it's day drinking. Mm-hmm. And that's oh. my thing. <laughs> If I'm out at night drinking, there's a re- specific reason that I've been I've chosen Sun. to or I've been summoned to <laughs> by a little dwarf. Maddie, you get down at, you gotta get down to the club and see this guy. Oh, <laughs> dwarf. I don't care. Okay. If you I'll go I'll, I'll go on TikTok and find these videos. I don't need to go down there. And, but in the new year, here's where I'll be going. Wichita. I haven't been there in forever. Tulsa. I haven't been in quite a while. Santa Rosa, Wheatland, make updates for when I had to cancel. Apologies again for that. Wasn't my doing, but I did it. Uh, San Luis Obispo, Monterey. Lewis will be in Monterey right after I am in Monterey. In nice. case you would like to see Lewis Black, there's a little plug. Cool. Birmingham, which, by the way, if you go watch Lewis's rant cast, mm-hmm. I sent him um, some Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. He's Jewish, but he'll still celebrate Christmas if I make him. <laughs> and they are shotgun shells. <laughs> That light up, yep, they're light up shotgun shells, uh, and if you know his act, it's for his joke about Jewy Jewy's gun shop. <laughs> <That's fun. laughs> uh, Birmingham, Alabama, yay. Uh, Atlanta, the Cobb Energy Center, I'll It'll be, be fun. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, Scottsdale, love it. Gamble, gamble, gamble. Mm-hmm. Chattanooga, <laughs> Chattanooga's so on the uprise. Mm-hmm. If I didn't have to fly every week, I would choose it over Nashville. There, really? I said it out loud. Oh boy! It's just more mountainy. The lakes. It's, it's pretty. prettier. Mm-hmm. It's a very. The youngsters are doing great things down there. Mm-hmm. They have a Weston. What else do you need to know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just more woodsy. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Nashville's getting. Nashville's great, mm-hmm. but it's getting kind of crowded. Huntsville. I love it. Two nights in Detroit. Also in Royal Oak, but mm-hmm. Detroit. March 1st and 2nd. So here's the thing. The Saturday is sold out, but then they keep releasing marketing cops. So you can go on there and look, and a row will just magically open up. I don't really understand exactly what's going on, but seems to be keeping people happy. Um, Friday, there's some tickets left. Uh, Dayton, Ohio, Indianapolis, straight to St. Elmo's. Boom. Best shrimp cocktail in the country. Yep. San Antonio. I will go to I, March 22nd, I can go on the river walk all I want, not sweat my ass off. Austin, Texas, love it. Maybe maybe the tater will come by, but now he's unretiring. Mr. Ron White is <laughs> unretiring. <laughs> I love that he just doesn't even talk about it. No. He retires, and then he unretires, and people are like, why are you doing this? I'm back. He just goes, I changed my mind. Right. Okay. okay. Marietta, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I'll go to my bar up on the hill. Terrytown. Um, Meredith Vieira, I'm going to be on, um, I hope I want, she asked me if I would be on one of her game shows. She likes my comedy. It was very nice. flattering. Cool. Yeah. Every once in a while, something just drops into your email box. You're like, Whoa, yeah. I love Meredith Vieira. She's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how I became friends with Greg Gumbel. Mm-hmm. Like just random yep. people I've watched my whole life. Mm-hmm. It is amazing to me that as a Midwestern person laying on shag carpeting, watching all these shows that then they're in my email box. Right. I'm like, yeah, Here we go. Meredith's coming to that show. Um, Wilmington, Delaware. Mm-hmm. 
and Thousand Oaks, California. And there's a bunch of dates going to be added, and these are not the fall dates or the summer dates. I just – people are like, why don't you just say? Because I can't say it till they're on sale right. because then people call the venue and bother them yeah. in a good way. I don't even bother, but they they have questions, mm -hmm. and then pe the venue gets irritated. So I can't – that's why people do that because you can't do it till the tickets are actually on sale. Right. Yeah. I can h give hints, though. Mm -hmm. Canada, I'll be making two cities. Oh. Two cities. Yep. I'm coming. And I'm going to ask not to be paid because then I don't have paperwork. <laughs> I'm being stalked by Iowa for $58. They threatened to throw me in prison. What? Iowa. Come on, Iowa. I swear to God. I don't know all these tax exams. People don't understand. I get taxed in every state I work in. It's a nightmare. And then I have the greatest accountant in the whole world. And Sherry makes it all easy, as easy as easy can be. But then things come into the post office box, and I'm like, like a certified threatening letter from Iowa. I love you, Iowa. What are you doing to me? All I do is promote you. Right. And you want to throw me in jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's either, I don't know, I transpose numbers. It's either $38 or $83. I'm like, I have it. Right. Just simmer down up there. Right. Maybe Sherry missed it or I missed it, but yeah. boy, they are fucking, you, lady, they want it. lady, you got five hours. <laughs> Call this number and talk to Bob or we're coming, we're coming, wherever you're at. Yo. They'll serve you, we'll serve you on stage. <laughs> You're going, I wonder which city am I going to prison in? Because I've been to every city in Iowa. And I have my favorites. Can I pick which prison? God. How am I supposed to go to my favorite store in the whole world, Raygun, if I'm in prison? Right. It would give me a lot of time to write some greeting cards, though, that I've been thinking of doing. All right, termites. Um, well, happy 2023. It's kind of sad. It's over. But 20, I always like even years better. For the most part. Yeah, I'm not an odd number person. I like even numbers. Um, I had a pretty good, you know, odd year. This was a weird year. Mm -hmm. Work-wise, it was great. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, you know, they're just getting old, and they're like old cars. We mm -hmm. just keep patching them up and see if it runs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Turn the key. Does it work? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, it works. Oh, my God. And then you're like, well, okay, we're good for till the next incidente. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, and so that was weird. That was a big part of a lot of time. But we've turned the corner. Good. They're at the casino. That's all you need to know. You do? I would have never thought that would happen last May. Nope. I would not have looked at the situations I saw and went, ah, don't worry about it. They'll be back at the casino by Christmas. Mm -hmm. nope. nope. There they are. Yep. Nope. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Merry Christmas, termites. Happy New Year, termites. And uh, there will be no podcast next week. Because I will be unavailable um, doing things in the Ozarks. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be warm-ish yeah, for the Midwest. With your family. I will have fun, and I will see you all in the new year, 2024. Bye. Welcome. <laughs> Goodbye to 2023. Oh Stevie will be back out of the road because she's clearly a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be going, going in 2024. Mm -hmm. I think to the New Orleans show. Oh. Yeah, how great would that be? Oh, Stevie geez. in New Orleans. Yes. Oh, witches everywhere. Witches, witches. <laughs> All right, that's it. Night, night, Thomas. <laughs>